Welcome to Grower Load. And here we got Intel. We're going to give some of my copy that box of Intel's keynote here, which I, I'll say this right off the top. I may do NVIDIA's, but man, was NVIDIA's a whole bunch of nothing for a long period of time. So if you really want NVIDIA's, maybe, but they didn't really have anything interesting for the desktop side. They, they open source some stuff, but they didn't really have any interest in, anything interesting. So let's dive into the Intel side. Because Intel, while it was kind of dry overall, they, they did have a presentation and they did have some stuff for the desktop and the laptop and stuff that was hopefully going to be interesting later this year and next year. But anyways, getting into it, the first thing off the bat I noticed was the jab that Intel CEO Pat Gelsinger said about Jensen <laughs> at NVIDIA. And so he goes through and he says, Moore's Law is not dead, it's alive and well. Um, unlike he's, And he literally mentioned Jensen in that. Um, he's unlike what Jensen thinks or says, Moore's Law is alive and well. And maybe... It, Intel starting to revive and getting back to the Moore's Law thing. I think Intel had some issues. <laughs> think we know Intel had some issues with um, their fabs causing the Moore's Law kind of to slow down. But here it is. I think they're trying to revigorate um, their energy here on the fab side and really show we can go out and hit our fabs and be leading in fabrication once again. We'll see if this actually takes off. Remember, they're using TSMC now for certain things, and even to the point where I think it kind of sounds like in certain things, they're going to have designs that work both at Intel Foundries and TSMCs, and that's going to be interesting for me to see where those characteristics maybe of maybe more performance or more power savings and which fab of maybe which fab is better. That would be really interesting to see here going forward, but... You know, that's where Intel is right now on the whole fab, or where I think they are on the fab side, is that they're really trying to catch up and exceed. But having that, you know, using TSMC as well, I think that they are, um, they're trying to make sure that when, it, let's say, TSMC is better than them, that's where they would be um, hitting on all cylinders and doing a lot of their development at. Um, the data center side, I'm going to start there because I ended there with AMD. But they have the new ZN6. It's going to be, they have a new chip with 144 E cores. Interesting chip. You know, they kind of showed, hey, you can reduce the servers down. If you're already in the Xeon things, you want the E cores and you just want to stay in that ecosystem without considering AMD, which AMD announced a new server where these might be able to be a little bit competitive with some of the Zen 4 or Zen 4C stuff. I think that there's. Uh, there might be something a little bit different that AMD has coming out here that's going to just be like, uh, okay, you can compete with last year's stuff. Great. Um, Intel, what about this year's stuff? I think that's where maybe some newer stuff, there's maybe something with P-Cores might actually be helpful. We'll see. Now, the Ultra Ethernet and Ultra Accelerator Link, those were also talked about by um, Intel. They're really going after openness and trying to be open here against NVIDIA proprietary, right? I mentioned this with um, AMD as well. AMD w is using it, or will be using it. We got Microsoft, we got a, a whole Broadcom, a whole bunch of companies on board with this. It's gonna be really interesting to see how it stacks up against NVIDIA to especially take it on and basically put it in a position where, hey, if you want openness and you want stuff, here you go, if not, you can do NVIDIA, and will this be a better performance option than NVIDIA? That is something that we will have to wait and see. I think that they will want this to be so that they can just... I think one thing that if it's not, that will help benefit them is being able to swap in between and communicate between Intel, AMD, whoever else is out there. You know, GPUs, um, CPUs, AI accelerators, FPGAs, all that stuff might be able to help them out, but that's the only thing that would really help them out if it is not faster than and the proprietary counterpart. Now let's do, jump into the PC side of things. Lo they talked about Lunar Lake. They really hit on Lunar Lake here. The next mobile, what is that going to be, like 200? Um, the Core 200, whatever they decided to call it now. 
and that's got that's going to be TSMC on there. 50% performance uh, graphics performance uplift, um, up or I should say up to lower power than Meteor Lake. They have 48 AI tops on this MPU, which I believe Intel is, or AMD is 50, and then um, Qualcomm Snapdragon uh, Elite X is 45. Then they talk about something about 120 total tops. That's including CPU, GPU, and the AI tops. So you're telling me that the AI tops isn't the biggest thing here? Um, but they, Pat Gelsinger did come out swinging saying, guess what? The um, X Elite is not better than X86. X86 is better. He is putting that out there firmly. And uh, I'm interested to see. What's, inter what's weird to me is that with the Snapdragon Elite stuff, is that, or Snapdragon X, there has, the benchmarks have been just weird. Um, show me some, like, desktop benchmarks. Show me, you know, mobile benchmarks we've been using for a while instead of all these, you know, mobile benchmarks just, you know, that were then converted into the um, desktop or laptop side of things. And, you know, maybe, maybe it does compete, right? But, or maybe I missed a benchmark too. But it seems like, you know, a lot of these, you know, hidden benchmarks right now until we get it out there. And I think we have just a little bit left to go until we kind of know where it all stacks up, which will be interesting to see, especially once Lunar Lake finally gets out there, which I think we're still, what, a uh, few weeks away or something, a month away, two months, something like that. These will have the XE2 graphics. Now, is that going to be the, if the XE2 graphics is coming out, is that all Battle Mage? And when will that come into a desktop part? That's my question because that's going to be to see if Intel can kind of get out of the growing pay, pains of their first generation um, graphics cards. If they can get into Battle Mage, I'm, Alchemist was there. If they can get out of the growing pains of Alchemist, got the drivers kind of, you know, ironed out. They've seen, I was listening to Gamers Nexus, them talking about, and he was reporting on that they talked about how they improved some of the pipeline for better, um, you know, compatibility with older games, stuff like this. That would be very interesting because, you know, maybe I might decide to dabble in one of these Intel graphics cards, throw it in a machine, and use it for a while. I think it has H266 now instead of 265. Um, on their encodings as well, but then they also mentioned Arrow Lake is going to be Q4, and is if it's in October, well, here you got what July is going to be. Um, July is going to be for AMD's launch. So you got July, August, September, October. So you got three months of launch of the Zen 5 stuff, and then let's say AMD's got. You know, kind of sees where Intel is and their X3D. You drop that in October. Is Intel, if it's better at gaming than Arrow Lake, when they've talked up Arrow Lake and a lot of this stuff, it could be good, sure. I, I don't know, but is that going to be um, just not going to be that big of a story because AMD can drop the X3D chips at that time? I personally really want to see where these line up with that. Now, who knows? I may, I like to build a computer. We'll see when I get one built. Um, Zen 5 stuff looks pretty promising. Um, what's there already? Um, of course, there's Intel here with Air Lake and the new socket there. So maybe I wait. Um, I've been waiting a long time anyways, right? <laughs> what's another few months? Um, but that they say in Q4... I I just have this issue where we didn't get really any information and it, does that mean that you're you still are behind a little bit where you need to be to catch up to where AMD Zen 5 numbers are? I don't know. So um that's going to be the interesting part here with Arrow Lake, right? They got to compete with Zen 5 coming out. And, well, and then they have to compete with X3D stuff. They got a three-month window, but then they also said Panther Lake is on schedule for 2025, sometime in 2025. So it looks like that, you know, they got a lot of stuff pushing here and, you know, getting that done. And we'll see where kind of some of the stuff is. 
they did talk about some of the per, per um, widening up the performance cores a little bit, kind of removing some of the hyper threading side of it, and um, you know th those those benefits and um, downsides. You know, if you remove hyper threading versus keeping hyper threading, what you can throughput, having a little bit better performance um, in certain scenarios, a little bit less in others, and while that's interesting, you know. To me, you know, let's make the best um, decision when you're making the development. Maybe hyper-threading is something that has just ran its course, and we're moving on because we have better techniques for things today and better logic to make sure that we're filling the core um, solidly all the time, which I'm fine with. But, you know, we won't know that for sure until we get this out into the you know, while, get some actual benchmarks use with it, because there's still problems with, I have the 12th gen laptop here, and with the P and the E course, there's still sometimes it does some weird stuff that I do not get. Um, but maybe that is because it's 12th gen, not thir you know, uh, later, or not even a core 100 yet. Um, but there's some weird stuff here, and I don't know if it's the process, it, I don't know if it's just because it's an older processor, or if the new ones are kinda, kinda fixed and the scheduling type of things and making sure it goes to the correct core, but I do see some weird stuff there. But that's kind of, you know, my thoughts here going through everything of Intel's Computex and, and summary here of my thing. One thing Intel wants is open standards. I, you see that with AMD too, you know, FreeSync and everything else that they've done. They want open standards, Rockham and all that other stuff. They have one API on Intel side and I mentioned this in AMD one, might as well mention it here. Well, if if it ever happens where Rockham and one API were to combine, that would be uh, <laughs> that'd be one thing I've been talking about for a while. I'd really like to see, but well, <laughs> I don't know if that's going to actually happen. Well, you know, that it would be interesting. Can you imagine AMD and Intel finally joining forces in some open, uh, in some big um, open um, source scenario here that would really out competing with. NVIDIA and who knows what it would be called or anything else but you have Samsung in there and you have um, Qualcomm I think is on one API and all of them work together and you can work on just the device that'd be kind of interesting to see but you know maybe Intel will you know also throw out something else and throw out another card here maybe they'll throw in a uh, PCI AI card that'd be nice and desktops that you can be able to throw AI into a machine that may not have it um, that would be kind of interesting to see, just a dedicated um, AI card, um, and we'll see. But that is kind of all I had for today, but, and let me know if you have any thoughts on Intel's Computex uh, keynote or what Intel's going to be coming out with. I'll be sure to read the comments below. I do enjoy reading them. Thank you so much for watching and helping out Gray Overload and helping this channel grow. I really do appreciate it. Like, share, subscribe, hit the bell icon, watch another one of my videos as it really does help out the channel. And until next time, God bless.